Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday, the weekly YouTube series where we talk about video game console repairs, mods, and restorations. And this week we have something really, really special. This is a PS Tool development unit for the PlayStation 2. So this uh, console, or this device really, is uh, something that developers used as they were making PS2 games back in the early 2000s. And basically what it is is a combination of a Linux computer uh, with a PS2, and it allowed you to debug code and make changes, and it also it allowed you to interface with a, another computer that was potentially doing the software development for making games. Um, so this um, this system, don't even know if it works. Uh, we're going to try to turn it on, put it through its paces, and uh, hopefully get it get it running and can you know show you guys how it works. All right, let's get started. Okay, guys, we are back, and I have the PS2 tool up and running. And um, as you can see, it's kind of a crazy thing to get set up. I have a lot of stuff going on here. So what I'm going to do is just go around the back and show you how I have everything connected and just give you a brief explanation of what's happening. So, okay, so here in the front, this is the PS2 tool, and basically what it is is a hybrid of a Linux computer that does game development and an actual PS2 dev unit. So it has components of a PS2, like you see here's your standard, you know, memory cards and controller ports. You've got your USB 1.0 port, and I think that's digital audio, I'm pretty sure, not, you know, but those are standard ports on a PS2. Um, over here on this little sneaky hidden compartment, you have some, some switches. Uh, I'm not sure if it's showing up well, but it lets you toggle between DVD drive emulation and actual DVD, and it lets you sim alternate between the tool mode and the workstation mode, and I still haven't quite figured out what that means yet, but you can toggle between those modes here. Okay, so you've got your, your DVD drive here on the, uh, on the side. And um, it won't actually extend out like this until you're far along into the boot process. So like if you just try opening and closing this right away when you turn on the machine, it'll just close immediately. And so I thought maybe there was something wrong with it, but it turns out that no, you just have to get further along into the boot process. Okay, so back here there are a, quite a lot of ports, um, and I'm going to kind of talk about that in detail. So um, you've got your power switch here, your power plug here, you've got a serial uh, DB9, I think. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a serial port here that lets you connect this Linux computer to another computer. You've got your standard PS2 ports for a keyboard and a mouse. At the moment, I actually don't have a PS2 mouse, so I just have the keyboard installed. Um, you've got an Ethernet cable and a VGA monitor port. Um, in this particular unit's case, those ports were hidden by these by these little protective covers. So I actually had to remove these and it took me a while to realize that that's what I had to do. I couldn't get the computer to show me anything and it was just simply because I was looking at the wrong ports. <laughs> so over here on the um, on the side, these are I think like your PS2 ports. So you've got your standard PS2 composite, you've also got VGA, and you've got S-Video and digital audio out. And so that's quite different from your standard PS2. So your normal PS2 would just have this port. It wouldn't have this or this. And it does, in fact, have digital out. But, um, yeah, so it gives you more than one way to output the, the video from the PS2. So then I've got, basically, the composite video going from here to this smaller monitor. That's what I'm doing over here. And so, so basically, coming back here, what, what I'm doing is displaying two things at once. From the VGA cable, uh, I'm displaying the Linux computer. And then over here on the composite, this is the PS2 side of things. And so far, what it's showing me is network identification information for logging in. Um, so if you wanted to remote into this computer, that's how you would do so. Uh, at the moment, I'm kind of stuck because it's requiring a login and password, but of course I don't have that stuff. So I'm going to have to do some reading and see if I can figure out some way of getting around that. And uh, we'll be back in a minute. All right, so I did some more research, and um, I was running into problems because the CMOS battery on this PS2 tool had died out. And so um, what I discovered is that I really needed to open the thing up 
and uh, take a look at it and replace the CMOS battery. And, you know, surprisingly, it's not that hard to disassemble. I found a guide on the internet, thankfully. <laughs> and, um, you know, there's just a couple of Phillips screws here to get rid of that bottom uh, support portion, that plastic support portion. And then there's, you know, another two uh, screws that you take apart, and then that allows you to remove this panel here. Um, and then uh, the whole system is like kind of surrounded with copper tape, so you need to kind of pull that off. I took care of that. And then from there, you've got four screws to remove. These two up here, and then one here, and one here in the corner. And then once that's done, you can just pull this flap up. And now you can really see the computer side of things. So here's the power supply. Um, there are two hard drives here. I think one is like a master and the other is a slave. I, I'm not entirely sure yet. And um, the really crucial thing that I was trying to get to was right down here. So there's a little coin cell. That's the CMOS battery, uh, you know, this, this, the, the, the button cell battery that saves that. So those are easy enough to remove. I just popped out the old one and I already replaced it with a, a completely new one. Um, so, so yeah, from here, I'm going to try to do two things. I mean, I'm going to see what happens now that it has a brand new battery, if it'll save the settings, and maybe it'll allow me to proceed forward. Um, and, uh, I might actually take these two hard drives out and make images of them because I don't know what's on them. There might even be some unreleased game or prototype game related stuff, um, on them. And for preservation reasons, it might be good to do that. So... So yeah, so it depends on what happens. I think for right now, I might just do a quick test and see how things go. But either way, in the end, I'd like to take these two drives out and make copies of them. All right, we'll be back in a sec. All right, so I've gotten everything figured out, and I just wanted to provide a little demonstration of how this uh, PS2 tool works. So um, what I ended up doing was making backups of those hard drives. I just created some images, just in case they could be useful for other people at some point. Um, so you can see how the system is set up. It's extremely loud. It has this crazy loud fan in there, and there's a whole bunch of LED indicator lights. Um, this time, I have it connected up to Ethernet, so you can see that it has an IP address, and you could potentially remote into the system and control it that way. And then what I ended up needing to do in order to get this system to work was I had to reset the root uh, password. So the, the main login account is root. And uh, I set it back to the default, and once I did that, I was able to log in uh, successfully. And so now, in order to play a retail game, you just have to enter in a set of commands, which I'm going to try to do now while on camera. Um, okay, so let me just do that real quick. Okay, so when you do that, you see that the uh, tool information disappears here. So now the screen is blank, and it's basically waiting for us to... Uh, start running the game and in order to do that. I just have to type reset space two space 100 and uh, Now you'll see there's a video signal showing up here and on the main screen here You actually get debug information as the game loads, so it's it's really cool. So the game will play as normal um, But debug information will show up here. So if there's some kind of error in the uh, game's code, it'll it'll um it'll come onto the display, and I guess that would allow, you know, someone to, uh, you know, debug and make changes to the code. All right, so here you go. You can see this is Grand Theft Auto 3. This is a retail copy, and it's running on the PS2 side of things. And then on this side, we've got the debug code showing up. Um, so I know that there are many other functions to a PS2 tool. This is just the only one that I have figured out so far. I know there's plenty more you can do. Um, but still, I mean, this is a really cool piece of hardware. This is what people used to develop, um, you know, real PS2 games. And potentially one could still do that to this day with this, with this uh, piece of hardware. All right, so that's it for today. So if you guys like this kind of content, you know what to do. Um, please feel free to uh, subscribe to the channel and hit a thumbs up on the, uh, on the video. And I'm going to have new content like this every Friday. Uh, so, yeah, thanks again for watching, and I will see you guys again next time. Bye.